Hello and welcome back to Tungsten Tales. Day one of Q School is done and dusted and we've got eight players through from around 300 players now through to the stage two of Q School. We've got four through from European Q School in Niedenhausen and four through from Milton Keynes, the MK Arena, obviously in the UK Q School. It's been a, a day of some very mixed results, some huge names have entered the fray today, the likes of from world finalist Kevin Painter, from world champion Raymond Van Barneveld have all graced the Q School stage. Uh, and we're going to have a little look at some of the results, some of the upsets and the players that have made it through to the second stage so far in Q School 2021. So first of all, we'll have a quick look at the names from the European Q School, as I say, in Niedenhausen. Um, You'll notice there are some names that we may not be too familiar with. Michael Ploy, uh, many of you won't be too familiar with. And Lorenzo Pronk is one that I'll openly admit I have i hadn't heard before the event started, but very impressive throughout the day. We'll have a, a quick look at him first. Uh, Lorenzo Pronk came through some tough games, as you can see. Not not overly impressive in the early rounds, but getting the job done, which is, which is all that matters at Q School. Uh, and then in the latter stages, only 75 average, but Mito, uh, beating Mikael Unterbuchner, who's a, a former semi-finalist in the BDO World Championships. And I believe he actually made the quarterfinals of the Grand Slam a couple of years ago, be defeating James Wade in the last 16 in that one. Uh, a very a very smooth player, a player that averages around the 90 mark most of the time, but uh, obviously not on this in this case with the 74 average against Lorenzo Plonk and his his final as it was the quarter final with with four players going through he played get DeVos um, and DeVos a player who's put in some incredible averages over the years but seems to seems to not turn up all the time we haven't seen him in in challenge tours we haven't seen him in Q school even on the BDO circuit sometimes he, he turns up and sometimes he doesn't you never know with Gert DeVos. He had a mixed day himself, but uh, 84 average for DeVos and a 90.8 average for Lorenzo Pronk as he progressed and made his way into stage two of Q School, which will be, of course, in around six or seven days' time. Um, elsewhere, we've got uh, Richard Venstra, who you will have heard of, I'm sure, a um, BDO regular in the World Championships, um, also a World Trophy um, finalist I believe and a Dutch Open champion that's for sure uh, and Adam Gavlas is the other name we'll have a very quick look at uh, a player that has played in the World Cup of Darts a World Youth Championship runner-up against Luke Humphreys a, a couple of years ago uh, and he was the most impressive player throughout the day and that, there's absolutely no debate about that you look through these averages yes 82 in the first round against Daniel Meyer um, but 91 against Sven Hilling Francois Schweyen uh, went down 6-1 uh, with a 98.8 average for Gavlas. He's, uh, he's not to everybody's taste. He's, he's a little bit methodical on the hockey, but with 99 averages, um, I'm sure people will be, be pining for him to be on the, on the tour in the coming months and years. Of course, they're getting a two-year tour card if they do come through Q School. Uh, then a 97 average to defeat his fellow countryman, Euro. Yuri Breshka, uh, I'm sorry if I'm getting any of these wrong, any of these names wrong. And then another 6-1 win, conceding just four legs throughout the whole day with a 93 average against Pero Lubic. Uh, Pero Lubic is an interesting name which we're going to delve a little bit deeper into because he was the victor over the the star name, the headline maker at Q School this year, Raymond Van Barneveld. And if we just have a look at his results. It was a pretty good day for Barney, all being told. Um, started off um, against the Bosnian Addis Ljubljankic. 6-1 uh, win, he looked fairly comfortable in that, you have to say. Uh, produced some good darts against Leah Hendricks in the second round. Then a 6-0 win with a, a ton-plus average. We didn't see many of them today in round three, the top 32, to put himself in last 16 and just two wins away from stage two, getting the job done nice and early. But uh, he went down to Pero Lubic and actually missed match darts in that. I can't quite confirm how many, but I reckon it was two or three against the Croatian. And uh, he's not through. He's got to go back again. He's got two more days to make it through to stage two. You have to think a last, probably a, a last eight, maybe even a last 16 tomorrow. 
we will put him in the running to come through those order of merit spots but uh, getting some match practice in and making sure he's nice and, and ready to go nice and sharp for the uh, second stage for Q school, Q school will be will be big for Raymond Van Barneveld but they are your four names through to the second stage Michael Ploy, Adam Gavlas, Lorenzo Pronk and Richard Veinstra. Now if I quickly go into the UK's Q School which is just being finished off as we speak. Um, Derek Coulson currently 5-4 up on John Emery but we'll have a quick look at some of the names that fell earlier in the piece. Uh, Kevin Painter has been a name that's drawn some attention in the lead up to the tournament. Recorded a nice 6-0 win early on but went down to Jacob Selby Rivas in the second round. Fallon Sherrick is another name that we need to have a very quick look at. Um, of course, the Queen of the Palace. Defeated Mike Norton in the opening round. That's a very tough draw, draw believe you me. He's a, a top player, is Mike Norton. I believe he has had a tour card before, at least competed on the Pro Tour through the Challenge Tour spots. Um, so she defeated Mike Norton, but then Sam Booth, who was a, a player that I wasn't aware of before the day, uh, and had a, had a pretty good run, did Sam Booth. Um, she was defeated by him in the second round of the match. So we'll just look at the three that are through so far. Uh, Derek Coulson and John Emery still going on as we speak. 5-4 to Derek Coulson in that one currently. Um, but the names that have gone through, Josh McCarthy uh, against Dale Hughes was, was the match of that last day. I mean, Dale Hughes and Josh McCarthy both averaging just below the 100 mark for most of that match. And it was Dale Hughes that progressed, getting better and better throughout the day. Uh, you look at some of these averages, 75, 84, 85 against Shane McGurk in the top 64. But when it really mattered in that quarterfinal spot, a 97.5 to see off Josh McCarthy, who was very, very impressive himself. And you've got to fancy him to come through in the latter, in the next two days, sorry, I should say. Uh, look at some of these averages, a 98 against Danny Moore, a 94.5 against Sam Booth, who I mentioned early on, and then the 97.5 in the final, you've, you've got to think he was very, very unlucky not to get the job done in that final. But there's plenty plenty more opportunities to come for Josh McCarthy and all the players that didn't win today. Um, the other two came through, Chaz Barstow, another player that I wasn't particularly familiar with before the day began. But uh, you, you look at some of his averages and you wonder where he's been all these years. I mean, uh, a 97 against Ross McDougall, uh, a 96.8 against uh, Ricky Oversby. I mean, some of these averages are, are better than what we've seen on the Pro Tour. If you can average 97, 96, you're, you're going to do some serious damage on the Pro Tour. I mean, even if he makes the Challenge Tour, with those sort of averages, you're expecting him to make finals and win events. I mean, I, I looked at his his previous record on the Challenge Tour, and it wasn't that impressive at all, but uh, the averages he's produced today, I mean, he, he is seriously one to watch in that second stage, and uh, maybe even on the Pro Tour in 2021. Um, confirmation there, Derek Coulson joins the other player, Eddie Lovely, in the second stage, in the final four players to come through. We will have a quick look before I leave you at Eddie Lovely's record. Um, of course, I will firstly say split into two sections, both in European and UK Q school. So there'll be plenty of players that, that aren't in this, the likes of Robert Thornton, Danny Baggish, uh, Matt Campbell in the European Q school. And um, that we'll see a little bit later on during the week. And don't worry, we'll have that covered right here on Tunks and Tales. Um, but Eddie Lovely, 85 against Corinne Hammond in the first round, a former Ladies World Championship finalist in the BDO. Uh, and pretty pretty convincing throughout the day. He was never pushed into a last leg decider. So Eddie Lovely is the other player to join um, Chaz Barstow, Derek Coulson and Dale Hughes as the eight players to make it through from European and UK Q School on day one of Q School. We'll be here tomorrow to cover day two. Hopefully we'll have some more winners, maybe even some big names making it through tomorrow. Some big surprises today. We'll be back tomorrow or here on Tungsten Tales.